Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday. This week we're taking a look at Revolt Zoo in Modern, which is an aggressive creature deck that also has a very explosive potential with cards like Hidden Herbalists, combined with Burning Tree Emissary and in particular Reckless Bushwhacker, which is why the deck is also sometimes referred to as Bushwhacker Zoo. But let's go over the entire deck here, starting out with one of our many one drops, the infamous Goblin Guide, 1 mana 2-2 two, two with haste, the only downside being if the Goblin Guide attacks the opponent gets to reveal the top card of their deck and if it's a land they get to put it into their hand but not a big drawback since the opponent's probably going to be dead before they take full advantage of those extra cards. Next up we have Curd Ape which is usually just a 1 mana 2-3 since as long as we control a forest Curd Ape gets plus 1 plus 2 and with all the Ravnica dual lands getting those extra types is not a problem. Next up we also have Experiment 1, which is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one with Evolve. So that means that if we play a creature with higher power or toughness than the Experiment 1, we get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, which means that the Experiment 1 is regularly just going to be a 1 mana 3-3 three, three in this deck. We can also remove two plus 1 plus 1 counters to regenerate Experiment 1, which can come up every now and then. Next up is our first Revolt card, Narnum Renegade, normally a 1 mana 1-2 one, with Death Touch, but if we enable Revolt, which means if a permanent we control left the battlefield this turn, we get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Renegade instead. And of course the easiest way to enable Revolt in this deck is just by sacrificing a fetch land, and that way we enabled Revolt and get to play our Narnum Renegade on turn 1 as a 1 mana 2-3 with Death Touch. And then the staple of all zoo decks, Wild Nakadal, which is usually just a 1 mana 3-3, three, three, since as long as we control a mountain, the Nakadal gets plus 1 plus 1, and if we control a plains, the Nakadal also gets an additional plus 1 plus 1. So on turn 2, this is just going to be a 3-3 three, three attacking, and is also a 3-3 three, three for Experiment 1 purposes, which is very relevant, since it's an easy way to grow our Experiment 1 into a 3-3. Three, three. Next up we get to some of our combo creatures. First up is Hidden Herbalists, which is another revolt creature, so enabling revolt by sacrificing a fetch land is the idea. And then if the Herbalist enters the battlefield with revolt enabled, we get to add a double green to our mana pool, which could let us cast another green one drop or two, which seems pretty innocent. Of course, if you have multiple Hidden Herbalists, you just get to chain them all and play all of them at once and still have two green mana left. And then if you have a couple of Burning Tree Emissaries, you can basically do the same and convert those double green into red and green mana, since when the Burning Tree enters the battlefield, we get to add red green to our mana pool. And then of course this also lets us cast some of our red one drops. But if we also happen to have a Reckless Bushwhacker in our hand, then things get really exciting, since Reckless Bushwhacker has Surge, which means that if we cast another spell this turn, we can just cast the Reckless Bushwhacker for the Surge cost, which is one cheaper than the converted mana cost. The Bushwhacker itself is a 2-1 with haste, but if we Surge the Reckless Bushwhacker, then all other creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 and haste until end of turn, and that of course means that if we played a bunch of hidden herbalists into burning tree emissaries, all those creatures get plus 1 plus 0 and haste and can attack right away for a lot of damage. Then to round out the deck we have two copies of Simeon Spirit Guide, which we can exile from our hand to add red mana to our mana pool, which is just a way to add to the explosiveness, can maybe even start playing Hidden Herbalists and Burning Tree Emissaries into Bushwhackers on turn 1, just by sacrificing a fetch land and an exiling spirit guide, so we have 2 mana on turn 1. Then we also have 4 Lightning Bolts of course, just to go face or remove a blocker. We've got full 4 Atarkas Command, which is very powerful in this deck, since the modes we will usually use are 3 damage to the opponent, and then all creatures we control get plus 1 plus 1 and reach until end of turn. So if you have multiple creatures out, all those getting plus 1 plus 1 means a lot of damage. And then we also have one copy of Rancor, just to push through some damage, giving a creature plus 2 plus 0 and trample. And when Rancor is put into the graveyard, we get to return it to our hand. So nice recursive way of giving our creatures trample. And then the rest of the deck, of course, is just fetch lands. We've got a lot of fetch lands, which is why the deck is pretty expensive. We've got 4 Arid Mesa, 4 Windswept Heath, 4 Wooded Foothills, and 1 Bloodstained Mire. And then the only lands we can actually get with all these fetch lands are 1 Temple Garden, which is both a forest and a plains. For Wild Nicodle purposes, of course, that's important. Then 1 Sacred Foundry, and 1 Stomping Ground, and then only 1 Basic Forest. 
but we also have some white cards in our sideboard and in modern white sideboard cards are known to be pretty powerful so we've got four copies of path to exile to deal with large creatures we've got a copy of rest in peace for graveyard decks a stony silence for artifact based decks like affinity we've got a thalia guardian of thraben which is great against decks with lots of non-creature spells especially the storm decks will struggle against thalia if they don't have one of their mana creatures we also have Ancient Grudge, another way to deal with artifacts. We've got two Destructive Revelries, which deal with both artifacts and enchantments while dealing some damage to the opponent. We've got a Boros Charm, which is a pretty versatile card that can give our creatures indestructible or just deal four damage to the opponent, or perhaps give one of our creatures double strike. Then Deflecting Palm, which also comes in against decks with very large creatures to deal a lot of unexpected damage. Then two more Graph Digger's Cage for more Graveyard Hate. And then finally one Throne of Amethyst, which is similar to Thalia, but because it's an artifact, it's a bit more difficult for the opponent to deal with. So that's why we have a split of both. So if that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw here, and this hand is not particularly great, since we don't have a second land. So yeah, right now we would just be able to play one of our one drops, and then if we don't find a land and don't get to play Emissary, then this hand is quite weak. I think we mulligan this and hope for a more exciting 6 since we are on the draw here. Alright, this hand I think we keep since with the scry we can look for a land. And if we do find a land, this hand can produce quite an explosive start. So I think we keep this one and look for a land. A Tarkos command can go to the bottom. So let's see what we're up against here. Wooded foothills. Getting a forest. Interesting. And search for tomorrow, so we're up against the Titan Shift deck. So that's Scape Shift with Primeval Titans, and they suspended Search for Tomorrow turn 1. We did not find a land, unfortunately, just an Experiment 1. We now have to decide what 1-drop we lead with here. Could be the Narm Renegade Enabling Revolt, would be a 1-mana 2-3 Death Touch or Experiment 1. Could grow to be pretty large if we do find a land next turn, since we would be able to play a 2-drop, which is a... 2-2 two, two, and then an Anarum Renegade, which would grow the experiment up to a 3-3. Three, three. So I think we lead with Experiment 1 here. So let's get a Stomping Ground here and pay 2 life. And then play Experiment 1 and pass a turn. And then really hope to find another Fetch Land on top, otherwise this hand doesn't do a whole lot. Opponent with a Valakut, we did not find a second land unfortunately. Just a Reckless Bushwhacker. I think we're still just going to play out our Narnum Renegade as a 1-2, since now if we do find a second land, we can deal a lot of damage next turn. So now we're just attacking with a 2-2 Experiment 1. Opponent gets to look for a land with Search for Tomorrow. Opponent has a Roast to deal with our Experiment 1, that's fine. And the Tap Land, still no second land unfortunately here, so we're stuck with just our 1 mana 1 2 Death Touch unfortunately. But I think if we do find a Fetch Land we still have the potential to win here. Opponent still only on 4 mana opponent with an explorer, so they get to play an additional land. There's their first land. And there's a far seek, so they did not have a second land in hand. Alright, so they did have a fetch land after all. No fetch land, so now we could just be dead to a scape shift next turn since we are at 17 having dealt some damage to ourselves with the Fetch and Shock. So yeah, I guess we're just attacking for two here. And then playing an Experiment 1. So we might just be dead here. Yep, and there it is, Escape Shift. So opponent can sacrifice a bunch of their lands, look for extra Valakuts and Mountains, and that's gonna deal 18 damage to us, I think, if they had 7 lands, that is. So opponent can get 6 mountains. 
with a Valakut in play that means 6 times 3 damage since they all see each other entering the battlefield. So that's 6 Valakut triggers and the opponent's gonna point those all at our face, unfortunately. So we were one fetch land away from a pretty awesome turn, but it did not happen. So hopefully we can make that happen in the next game here. Alright, on to sideboarding where the opponent might have a bunch of Anger of the Gods that they bring in. Uh, what do we want to bring in? We could bring in Thorn of Amethyst as it slows down some of the opponent's ram spells, but it's also not particularly great. Opponent might also bring in a bunch of Obstinate Bailoths. Um, Thalia could be an option to slow down the opponent's ram spells as well. Don't think we want Deflecting Palm for Titan since that's probably going to be already too late once the opponent gets a Primeval Titan in play. Uh, Boros Charm is interesting since that can save our creatures from an Anger of the Gods. So I think we're interested in a Boros Charm here. Three cards coming in means three cards need to go out. I think Lightning Bolt is probably one of our weakest cards since the opponent's not going to play many creatures that this is going to kill. So I think we'll try it like this and hope to draw a second land. We will definitely be on the play and this time we do have a bunch of lands and yeah I think we can keep this. It's not a particularly explosive hand by any means but I think it's a keepable hand for sure. And typically when we have the option of Wild Nacoddle or Goblin Guide on turn one I prefer leading with Wild Nacoddle. So let's get our Bloodstained Mire, which is our worst fetch land, out of the way, since that's going to get a stomping ground. And say go. Opponent has a forest. So no Lightning Bolt turn 1, instead another search for tomorrow. Alright, we found another Goblin Guide, which means we can get a Sacred Foundry here. And then play both guides which hopefully don't reveal too many lands off the top since we don't really want to be giving the scapeshift deck extra lands. Alright, looks like we revealed Sakura Tribe Elder on top, which is a blocker for the opponent, so definitely one of their better two drops here. So ideally we find a one drop creature next turn so we can play it and surge the Reckless Bushwhacker. So opponent plays the Tribe Elder, which is likely gonna block the Wild Nacoddle. So now we found a Rancor, which is nice, since now we get to enchant our Wild Nacoddle, that way our opponent can block our largest creature and then surge the Reckless Bushwhacker. And here I guess we'll preserve our life total and get a Forest. And then cast with Surge. And in fact, I think the opponent's just dead here, since even if they block a Goblin Guide, they're still taking 11 damage. So yeah, a casual turn 3 kill here. Alright, sweet, so a nice turn 3 kill here on the play. Hopefully we can repeat the same on the draw. So yeah, let's run it back. And hope to have another explosive draw. Alright, so this hand's not particularly great since we have the Simeon Spirit Guide that actually doesn't do much besides casting Thalia on turn 1, which doesn't play very well with our two Experiment 1s. So if we just go Experiment 1 into Thalia, then this Spirit Guide basically didn't do anything and 3 lands is a bit much, so I think we can do better than this. So we'll go down to 6 and... Alright, I think we can keep this one. We can just turn two, play out two Herbalists and experiment one. And then we have a second land as well. And Goblin Guide, I think we'll keep since then on turn two, we can play the guide, bumping the experiment one and attack with an additional creature. So sure, let's keep that on top. Since we're on the draw here, we will get to draw the Goblin Guide before we get to shuffle. So we draw the Goblin Guide, but I think we still go for the Hidden Herbalists on turn 1 with the Spirit Guide, rather than just play a Goblin Guide on turn 1. So we enabled Revolt, Exile, Simeon Spirit Guide, play Hidden Herbalists, get 2 mana, play another one, get 2 mana, 
play experiment one and pass the turn unfortunately can't use that last bit of mana not a bad turn one but almost all our cards are on the board here so if your opponent does have a cheap sweeper we might be in trouble we see a far seek gets a mountain and another goblin guide all right we're all in at this point we're not gonna play around any sweeper effects let's get a sacred foundry here and play both goblin guides grow the experiment one as well attack with all and opponent did get a mountain off of the goblin guide there as well as a lightning bolt all right so opponent's at 10 we have 10 power in play but we know they have at least a lightning bolt for lands so is it going to be an obstinate Baloth or an Anger of the Gods? Those are the cards we don't want to see. All right, obstinate Baloth, opponent gains four and makes a 4-4 four, four creature. And we draw Temple Garden for the turn. So now we're not in a great spot since we're just attacking for eight damage. Opponent gets to eat one of our creatures. And then they still have a Lightning Bolt, but we have to attack here. Explore revealed, that's fine probably eat the experiment one yep opponent takes eight down to six could have played it tapped in case we draw a reckless bushwhacker and just want to play that as a 2-1 haste and not have to pay the two life but there's some benefit to bluffing opponent cast the explorer and our draw is a wooded foothills unfortunately if we're attacking with everyone opponent blocks bolts one of our creatures drops to at least two if they have two bolts then this attack is quite poor but again we don't really have a choice here so attack with all hope for the best sakura tribe elder also not great for us since that's an additional blocker and there's a lightning bolt opponent blocks one of them takes four down to two and i guess now we'll play a tapped temple garden keep our revolt enabler in hand and if our opponent has a scape shift here we're also just dead so yeah we were very close here to winning just needed one of these lands to be a spell or just being on the play would also have won us the game i think so yeah here we see a scape shift and our opponent's probably gonna have enough mountains to get here so i think this matchup overall is probably favored for us since we're i think a turn faster in general but of course there's lots of cards that can change the matchup for opponent draws an anger or as we saw here sakura tribe elder into obstinate bailoth they can certainly buy enough time to get to scape shift before we deal lethal damage but i think in the first game if we found our second land in the first couple turns we would have had a pretty awesome turn with a double hidden herbalists into burning tree emissary into reckless bushwhacker but still got some pretty awesome turns in this game as well so can't really complain so we'll move on to the next one and hope to be on the play all right we're on the play this hand's a bit heavy on the lands i think we can still keep this one since we can go turn one experiment one into turn two herbalist into renegade and we'll have a three three experiment one not a great hand by any means but i think we'll keep we could go fetch for a forest here just to get a land out of the deck but i think preserving our revolt triggers is important so let's just go temple garden into experiment one and say go opponent with a tapped stomping ground interesting all right narnum renegade not a bad draw so now we get to go fetch our stomping ground enable revolt and then go hidden herbalists into double Narnan Renegade. And hit for three. So just like that, our hand turned out okay. Now hopefully we don't draw too many more lands as we see a Radiant Fountain, interesting. So is this some sort of amulet deck? as we see an explore 
but nope, our opponent just concedes on turn two. Not bad, but we don't quite know what our opponent's up to. We just saw Stomping Ground, Radiant Fountain, Explore. And my guess is some sort of amulet deck, but I'm not gonna sideboard too heavily just in case we side in the wrong cards. If our opponent's some sort of ramp amulet deck, cards like Thalia and Thorn could be okay. If we want to deal with the amulet itself, we could bring in the revelries, but I think that's a little too reactive. We still want to be the aggressor in the matchup. So the only two I'm considering are Thalia and Thorn. And what could we take out? If we're up against some sort of ramp deck, we don't want too many bolts. Could also see bringing in Boros Charm against Sweeper Effects. So these are the cards I'm considering. Still think we can shave a couple bolts. And then perhaps Rancor won't be necessary. And just try it like this. Seems reasonable. Maybe we have a curve that's a little too high right now with lots of added two drops. I think we'll be fine. We are on a draw after all, so we might have an extra land. All right, this hand only has the one land. Kind of speculative. And we also don't have any Burning Tree Emissary, so we can't turn the double green into a red for the Bushwhacker. So I actually think this is a mulligan. This one doesn't have any lands. Could we still potentially keep if there's a land on top? It's still not great, even with just one land. So that's unfortunate. Alright, I guess we'll keep this. Looking for creatures, basically. Do have a turn one Thorn, which could be good. And I guess we'll just go for it, since we don't have anything else going on. This might be effective, but with no creatures to bank this up, this hand isn't going anywhere. Opponent fetches to 19, see it tapped Stomping Ground. Into Mountain. And nothing, alright, so we might have slowed down our opponent a little bit. This also costs three. Guess we should have considered just playing a tapped Sacred Foundry. All right, opponent's not doing anything. There's a Thalia, all right, we can play her. So I guess we'll just play the Sacred Foundry, take two, play Thalia. So now we have two of these effects in play. So if our opponent didn't have a play last turn, they might not even have a play this turn. That's coming up. Unless they of course just have a Lightning Bolt and can cast that for three mana. Or a Fatal Push. Alright, they're just abrupt decaying the Thorn. Interesting, so... Opponents maybe not playing what we thought they were. Four mana for a Seismic Assault. Alright, so they can discard lands to deal damage to our creatures. And they're gonna do that right away on our Thalia. Can't do anything about that. So, Burning Tree, not a great draw since it just dies to one Seismic Assault. But uh, I think we still have to play the Burning Tree here. And then we'll keep the Atarkas Command in hand. We could use a Darkest Command to give the Burning Tree plus one plus one in response to a Seismic Assault usage. And if the opponent's plan is to kill the Burning Tree, they should do it on their turn just to play around a Darkest Command. There's an Experiment one, which we're gonna attack first. Opponent's gonna use Seismic Assault and we're gonna use a Darkest Command to deal three damage and give our creatures plus one plus one. And there we see the Gidrock monster discarded by the opponent. As they're gonna use another Seismic Assault on the Burning Tree. So we see Sakura Tribalder, the Gidrock monster, Abrupt Decay, Seismic Assault. So a land-focused deck, as they also have Dagmore Salvage, which has Dredge too, so they can keep getting their lands back. So Tarkus Command just dealing three damage here. The question is if we even want to play out the Experiment 1, or if we... Want a way to maybe enable Surge, something like that. I think we'll still play out the Experiment 1 here. Get the Stomping Ground. 
and say go. Opponent just dredged the deck more and used it again, milling over some stuff and there is the bushwhacker so now we'll definitely keep it I think to combine it with a one drop creature or even a two drop. Opponent keeps getting back their deck more salvage, spills over Bojuka Bog and Anger, good to know about. Alright, the draw is a Herbalist's, so we could run these two out there, or we can just wait for some sort of critical mass and try to one-hit KO the opponent. So if we play out Hidden Herbalist Bushwhacker, opponent kills the Herbalist, we hit for two. Still not that great, so I think we actually want to be patient here. Alright, opponent's gonna Seismic Assault us for two. So they can dredge the Dagmar again. So they're probably looking for a Life from the Loam to start getting back multiple lands. Alright, and another Bushwhacker, so now we can Sack, play the Herbalists, and then double Bushwhacker, seems like the play. And then cast with Surge. Opponent's gonna kill the Herbalists in response here, that's fine. And then Surge out another Bushwhacker. And their opponent had another land. So, Bushwhacker down, but now we finally have a 2-1 in play, so we can start dealing some damage. Opponent's just gonna dredge back their Dagmar Salvage, revealing Thrak Tusk and Wooded Foothills. So we really want to find a 3 Toughness Creatures, and they decided to play out the Dagmar Salvage here, since they have another one in a graveyard, I guess. And we find a Goblin Guide. So let's attack with both. Opponent got a Wooded Foothills, that's unfortunate. Killing the Bushwhacker. And opponent keeps dredging. They still haven't found a life from the loam. So we'll keep attacking with the guide, even though it might reveal some lands here. Primeval Titan, but our opponent doesn't have any double green, so that's good. Does our opponent use Seismic Assault? They do, so now we can do the same as last time. Creatures plus one plus one, and three damage to the opponent. So Goblin Guide gets to stay around. So do they decide to dredge, or do they want to keep the Primeval Titan? Looks like they continue to dredge. Removal spell for the Goblin Guide once again, as we draw another Goblin Guide. I wouldn't have attacked with the Goblin Guide knowing about our opponent's removal spell for it. Now that we drew a second guide, it might be worth it to attack with both, but it's very likely to reveal some lands. Want to consider not attacking, and again waiting for an opportunity to maybe surge out something, play multiple creatures in the same turn, because it seems bad to attack with two guides against the Seismic Assault deck, because if we reveal just one land, then this attack doesn't do anything. And we're just fueling the opponent. They do decide to kill the guide end of turn. And there we go. Double life from the loam revealed. So now the opponent's in business. Next turn the opponent can dredge life from the loam, get back three lands. And then uh, we're definitely in trouble, so I don't think we're winning this game. But I think we'll still cast both. And the Goblin Guide. And the opponent's just going face here with the Seismic Assault. A life from the Loam. Kills the Spirit Guide. There's a Curd Ape. Finally a creature that would survive the one use of Seismic Assault, but now their opponent has life from the Loam going. It's no longer gonna do much. And our opponent's just gonna deal two to us, deal another two to us, and then next turn dredge a life from the loam. We'll get to see a few more cards. So we see Scavenging Ooze, Lightning Bolt. So now we definitely know a bit more about the opponent's deck, so we can adjust our sideboard. So let's take a look. So the Thorn doesn't look great, nor does the Thalia really. We want to have creatures with more than two toughness. The Goblin Guide looks suspect. 
definitely want to rest in peace against a life from the loam strategy. Ravelry can deal with the seismic assault. The question is if we really care about it or if we're just going to try to be faster this time. We also saw Anger of the Gods. Boros Charm might still be okay. Uh, Rancor doesn't seem particularly great against a seismic assault that's active since they can just shoot down the creature that's being enchanted. But if we can stick it on a three toughness creature, then it's quite good and take out maybe our Goblin Guide, which dies quite easily and is not great against the Seismic Assault deck. Be more of a burn deck, and yeah, try to have those explosive starts with burning trees into bushwhackers. All right, so let's try this weird concoction of a sideboard strategy. We'll be on the play. And I don't think we can mulligan this, but we really want to draw a second land. Opponent mulls to six. They're gonna keep. Alright, let's go get a stomping ground and play out experiment one. Next turn we will have to decide if we want to play another experiment one or if we want to play the wild Nicole right away. Of course if we draw a second land we could also play the burning tree. Instead we find a Narnum Renegade. So I think I'm okay with playing out the wild Nicodel here. If we draw fetch land the Renegade can still enable the evolve on the experiment one and be able to hit for two here. And there we see a swamp into Sakura Tribe Elder. That's quite annoying since that can block for a turn and also ramp the opponents. As we see Destructive Revelry, no second land yet. I think we just attack with both and then play out another experiment one. There's a mountain. Hopefully our opponent doesn't sweep the board here. Search for tomorrow comes off of suspend. Gets a second mountain. This could be an anger. Stomping ground. Tapped. And another Sakura tribe elder. Opponent might be setting up for a big primeval titan next turn as well. As we keep missing on our second land. Well, I think we just have to play out the Renegade here. Grow our other experiment one. Attack with everyone. Bolt on the Nakadal. Pass the turn. And hope not to get uh, wrecked by a Primeval Titan. All right, there's a Seismic Assault instead. Put on two cards left in hand. We do have the Destructive Revelry this time. Is this an Abrupt Decay? Nope, Life from the Loam. And our opponent got back one land it looks like. And still no second land. Starting to become an issue. So we are just gonna have to attack with everyone here. One experiment, one down. Opponent takes three, down to ten, and we have to pass it back. Opponent dredges with life from the loam, plays Sakura Tribe Elder, and they're gonna cast a life from the loam here, but only one land in the graveyard. And we're gonna start bolting the opponent here. Opponent kills experiment one in response. Another bolt, all right. I guess we're just a burn deck now. And actually if the opponent can't gain any life next turn, then we're in good shape. If they're just gonna dredge the life from the loam, then uh, they might be in trouble. Opponent dredges once again. Casts a life from the loam, gets back two lands. We're just gonna bolt. And if we can find a second land, we have enough burn to finish off the opponent here. Opponent kills the renegade. Alright, there's our second land. So we don't have revolt for the herbalist here. So I guess we're just gonna go burning tree into revelry, kill the seismic assault. 
and I think we just pass the turn. We don't really mind our opponent dredging life from the loam because then they're dead. I don't see a reason to play the burning tree and then revelry since then our opponent knows they have to take their draw rather than dredge the life from the loam. So I think we just pass. This way we get to keep up a darkest command in case our opponent gains life. Opponent's gonna shoot us with seismic assaults. And do they decide to dredge? They do. Reveals Gitrock monster and a couple of lands. We're gonna cast a life from the loam and in response we can destructive revelry the seismic assault. Deal two damage to the opponents and then we have plenty of burn to finish them off. And now they have three useless lands in hand. Alright, so this worked out in the end. Let's uh, show off our Burning Tree Emissary. Get two mana. And then Atarkus Command dealing three damage to the opponent. And I guess we'll give our creatures plus one plus one. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And we have an interesting hand here with... Lots of one-drop creatures, Bolt, Rancor, one land. I think we can actually try to keep this one and really hope for a second land here. If we don't find a second land, this hand could be quite bad. But with a second land, I think this hand's quite good, so let's risk it. Inspiring Vantage, so we could be up against Burn as we see an opposing Goblin Guide, hopefully revealing a land. Do we get there? Nope. Hidden Herbalist. So that's unfortunate. Guess we go Wooded Foothills and then Curd Ape can block the Goblin Guide. Don't think we want to bolt the Guide. So sure. I think we want to get a Stomping Ground here since otherwise the Curd Ape doesn't get the bonus. We might see a removal spell on the Curd Ape and an attack from the Guide. If we can find a second land next turn, I don't hate our chances. But if we miss, then uh, we're just going to fall too far behind. Lightning Helix on the Curd Ape. Opponent hits us. Does not reveal a land. In fact, just reveals an Atarkus command. Think we run it back on the Curd Ape. Bolt on the Curd Ape. Hopefully we find a land now with the guide. Lava Spike down to 10. Rift Bolts entered the revealed zone and still no land. Unfortunate, so now I get to pass. Rift Bolt puts us to five. And then just one or two burn spells are gonna kill us here. And the guide is going to attack. And now we can lightning bolt the guide. And trigger reveals Sacred Foundry. We did it! There's Eidolon, which is basically gonna shut the door here since we need to kill the Eidolon in order to play out our cards, but we don't have a removal spell left. And if we just let the Eidolon hit us, that's also no good. I guess we can play a tapped Sacred Foundry, play out Nakadal. And does the opponent have a burn spell? I guess the answer is yes, no, instead a second Eidolon, but that's also gonna shut out the game for us since we can cast zero spells from our deck, so now we play the waiting game. No attacks from the opponent, but we can't really do anything either. There's a Bushwhacker, still costs three mana, still triggers the Eidolon, and at some point the opponent draws a burn spell and we're dead. Opponent keeps drawing lands, but we're still not gonna win this game, so we draw bolts that we can't cast. Alright, there's a Boris Charm, so we finally get to concede. And take a look at our sideboard, where we don't really have any particular hate cards for this matchup. I guess Thalia and Thorn could do some work, but I think on the play we just want to be as proactive as possible and just hope for a fast start. I could see Rancor being bad, but I guess a Thorn could be okay. But that's about it. I don't think we want to make any other changes. So let's try it like this. And this hand 
is okay, but not great. I think the sand's probably keepable, but I'm definitely not excited about it. And it's also not straightforward what we should be playing on turn one here. Between the guy and the experiment one, which land to play, if we want to fetch or not. How does our turn two look like? If we play one of our one drops, we could play Herbalist, only be able to play the experiment one off of it. Which means we would have to play the Goblin Guide on one. But then we're not maximizing our experiment one evolve triggers. But I guess that's still okay. So in that case, I think we just want a Sacred Foundry Goblin Guide next turn, fetch for a forest, play Herbalist, play Experiment 1, hope to have drawn another green 1-drop. So let's Goblin Guide, attack. Opponent also has a Goblin Guide. And do we see the same start? We do. Opponent reveals Burning Tree Emissary, now that's exciting. Now we get to go Wooded Foothills into Herbalist, into Burning Tree, into Experiment 1 plus Bolt. That's quite a bit better than our previous situation. So let's get that Forest. Play Herbalist. Play Burning Tree. Play Experiment 1. And we could Bolt the Goblin Guide or we could just Bolt Face. I think I'm okay with bolting the guide. That way maybe the experiment one can still get in there. Attack with the guide. Lightning helix revealed. It's not great for us. So our best draws probably include a Tarkus command. All right, there's a swift spear and a stomping ground untapped. So the opponent wants to bolt something here. And the Swift Spear would actually be a pretty good blocker thanks to Prowess. But now we get to bolt the Swift Spear and attack with everyone, so Bolt was definitely a good draw here. Otherwise the Swift Spear would have blanked our attacks. And send the team. And they're gonna kill the Goblin Guide, interesting. Reveals Boros Charm. Opponent takes five. And we'll play a tapped Temple Garden and say go. So we know about the Lightning Helix and the Boros Charm. And there's a Reckless Bushwhacker, which we might as well just play out here. Also gonna evolve the Experiment one, which is probably gonna be their Lightning Helix target. They are fetching. Attack with everyone. Still curious why they bolted the Goblin Guide and not one of the other creatures. Lightning Helix on Experiment 1. Opponent takes 6 down to 3. Let's see if they find an answer. And they don't. Sweet. On to the third game. So do we want to sideboard anything differently here? Thorn still seems okay. Still not a great card since it also hurts us, of course. Maybe on the draw we don't want it as much as on the play. Unsure what the last card should be here, but I think I'm just gonna go with the Thorn once again. Just to see if we get to draw it and see its effect. Of course this time we're on the draw. So things will be a bit more difficult. And this opening hand with four lands is not gonna cut it. Since we're looking at a turn one Curd Ape into Burning Tree at Darkest Command and then do nothing for a whole bunch of turns. All right, I guess we'll keep this one. Forests, we don't really want to draw here. We're looking for a one-drop creature, preferably. So let's cry that to the bottom. Inspiring Vantage into Swift Spear. We might just want to bolt the Swift Spear here. Instead, we find Wild Nakadal. I actually think we still want to keep a bolt, since that means that next turn we get to go Herbalist into Burning Tree into Wild Nakadal. So that does mean that we have to play out the Stomping Ground. And then the question is if we even want to bolt right now or wait, since of course if we wait and our opponent has two instants, we get punished pretty severely. Could also wait to potentially kill an Eidolon, since if the opponent has an Eidolon of the Great Ravel, then we just lose on the spot basically. Do need to keep the Arid Mesa for the Herbalist, so that means we are forced to play the Stomping Ground untapped. And I think we just pass, and then uh, for opponents, plays a spell to enable prowess, so we will try to kill the Swift Spear. But if they have Eidolon, then I don't want to 
be dead to that. So if they attack for one and don't play anything, then I think we just take one damage here. Again, since two instants would wreck us. And then end of turn we can fire off the lightning bolts. And the opponent did have the idol on, so glad that we waited. So now we get to bolt the idol on. Only take two rather than a million. And there's a guide. Alright, so we kind of get to go off, but we will take some damage here. Since we can't fetch for a forest. Let's see, you want Sacred Foundry or Temple Garden. I don't think it really matters here. I think we'll go with the Sacred Foundry. Since we're just going to empty our hand here anyways. So Herbalist. Into Burning Tree. Into Wild Nacadal. Into Goblin Guide. And hit for two. And next turn this Atarkas command is going to be quite powerful. So Bloodstain my revealed, but gets to draw that one for free. And let's see what they can come up with. Rift Bolt, that's fine. Do we see an attack with the Swift Spear or does it stay on defense? Stays on defense and Bushwhacker to draw. But uh, here we're definitely going to play the Atarkas command, I think. Since if the opponent plays an instant to pump the Swift Spear to eat one of our creatures, the plus one plus one is probably going to save them. So guy triggers. Opponent fetches. Guy reveals mountain. Opponent keeps getting lucky here. And uh, yeah, let's see if they block. They block the Burning Tree Emissary. Alright. I guess we're casting this. So deal three damage. And creatures we control get plus one plus one. Opponent can kill the Wild Nicodle here. But the problem is otherwise our opponent can just pass priority. Instead opponent's just gonna deal four damage to us. Which uh, doesn't really change things. Of course they can burn us out next turn. But they are taking ten here down to four. So if they have another Boar's Charm and a Lightning Bolt we're dead. Of course they still have that Rift Bolt that uh, kind of forgot about. But uh, yeah, if our opponent has Boris Charm or two Burn Spells we're dead. But it's not, uh, not going to be a surprise if that happens. There's a Lava Spike and I think we're dead. No? Alright, sweet. Our opponent did not have a Burn Spell. So we win the match and our opponent reveals a hand of four lands. That's quite unfortunate on their part. So I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.